Hi there folks, welcome back to another video. This is Dawn at Affordable Desert Living. And today folks, it's a little different. I'm going to be doing an automotive project. So this little old 98 Toyota Corolla, the inside fabric in the roof area is absolutely horrible. I mean, we're talking, I'm driving along and pieces come down in front of my face. And I'm ripping those off and going, whoa, I need to see here. And also looking in the rear view mirror, I can just see bands of this material swinging back and forth like some Hawaiian skirt in some whole bad Hawaiian movie. I mean, really, it's just distracting. In order to replace the headliner, of course, I have to remove the old stuff, which is this stuff here, <clears throat> and then also the foam that's underneath it. Now this could get a little complicated because I tried to glue this this uh, headliner back together years ago with some kind of incredibly strong glue. So I'm going to have to try to peel all that old stuff or scrape it off, I should say. And, so, and uh, we got for the tools of the trade a uh, brand new wire brush. So I've been told this stuff gets in your mouth and nose and it's not very good so I'm gonna put on a mask and some goggles. So I'm just using that to remove the old old glue. So I thought about buying a new headboard for my car but Boy, I'll tell you, the price of them scared me away, so. So these were three felt like pads that literally were just stuck to the metal part of the ceiling of the car. So what I should have done is fold this over in a nice billowing loose fold. But once this fabric touches glue, it's game over. There's no way to alter it. So of course it's really important to gently rub all over the areas where there's any kind of contours or indentations.
So I'm back inside and I've got the headboard just placed on the bed for now. Uh, but the big thing is, is now I'm out of the breeze. You can see I've got a lot left over. So now that I'm out of the wind, I'm just going to take the scissors to this and, uh, and then do some trimming. So I got these brand new ultra sharp scissors I bought at Ace Hardware. So hopefully they'll do a good job. So I left about an inch and a half of material around the perimeter. It's kind of funny, I saw some dark spots all over the material. I'm like, oh no, I've got glue, dark glue, or something all over this. Nope, it was sweat. <laughs> so it all dried out. So what I'm doing here is, this is going to have to fold over in here. And of course there's an indentation. So to make that work good, I'm just going to make some cuts not too far in so that this will fold in there pretty nice, I hope. And uh, make it so it's not so creased. So you can see it'll fold in there like so. Pretty nice, I think. So I decided to live dangerously, folks, and uh, Go ahead and try to finish up all these edges before the wind comes up. Wish me luck. And I'm glad I got two cans of this because I'm down to not a lot left, so. So overall, I'm really happy with this, folks. Um, it's not perfect, but I didn't think it would be. Uh, the main area is pretty nice and smooth, I think. So, uh, uh, this is pretty exciting. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, Nerve-wracking. <laughs> uh, I think I uh, obsessed over doing it correctly, even though I knew that I wouldn't because I'm not a professional. But anyway, that's how it's done. And then there's a variety of other things to cut. Where the mirror goes and where the visor goes, etc. Oops. Oops, Don has got a bleed. That's all part of it. Oh, great. Couldn't wear gloves for this job because it was too clumsy, but it's not a big deal. We'll get a band-aid and carry on. You know the story, blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, I don't think I cried over this, so there's no tears, but definitely blood and sweat. Thought I was going to need a band-aid. Not really, just a lot of blood. So, the old-fashioned, you know. And as my British friends might say, oh, blood went away in no time. Wasn't even a flesh wound. Um, as a matter of fact, this is not an excuse for Lying down on the job and not getting the work done. Get your act together, mate. Get the work done. Well, maybe they'll hire me as a car upholsterer part-time somewhere, maybe. I don't think so. Here we go, folks. Not perfect, but a lot better than what I was in there before. That's for sure. So let's have fun and put it back in the car. And a lot of people say, this is one of the toughest parts, just getting the headliner in and out of the car. 
So what I've heard, folks, is that you need to let this dry for 24 hours, but I'm thinking, why can't it dry inside the car for 24 hours? It's my thinking anyway. Really important to remember that the only way you can put this headboard back inside is through the front passenger doorway. That's very important. Too easy as it sounds, Straya. So unfortunately, these plastic pieces are somewhat flexible. You can hard to see them there. So the trick is to get the headliner behind them. So which I've done. Now we got to do the back ones. So the back part's got to fit behind that back piece of molding. So a little tricky, but we'll bend this molding down a bit. And slide our headliner where it should be. There we go. And same thing for the other side here. It was very forgiving. It, uh, I bent it really, really hard, but it was very forgiving, which is great. So now it's just a matter of putting this back into position. I can see where the screw holes for the mirror are and uh, things like that. So I'm working kind of diagonally as in um, uh, working in the front a bit and now working in the back. And all these holes are lining up and now I'm just putting all this back in place and beautiful that just snapped in place nicely which is great and of course now that I'm in it I can see lots of imperfections and how I did this but uh, you know it's going to be a heck of a lot nicer than the way it was Tuck all that back in. We're supposed to go. And then let's see if this will pop back in place. Hmm. Uh oh. Looks like I broke, or maybe it's not broke, it just popped out of place. Okay. there back in place beautiful okay folks we're uh, ready for the fun of putting everything back together to begin and uh, all the parts are here I hope so where screws would fall out and I'd lose them like these visors I just taped things in place so I knew what screws went where so we'll start uh, with things that are relatively easy, uh, like the, uh, the the dome light. So first thing you do, you can see the clip to uh, connect to the light was unplugged. So I should be able to just clip that back in place nice and easy. There we go. So there's just two screws that hold this in place, and they're Phillips as well. There's one nice and firm, and then I'll just snug up the other one. And that came off really easy with a flat screwdriver. There we go. The one I was trying to put in was broken. It's this one on the left, on my left here. You'll see there's little plastic prongs and it only has one of them. So no wonder it couldn't grip. 
All right, let's see if we can do better with this. All right, now this part, nice and sturdy. There we go. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest off-grid old person of all? I shouldn't have asked her. There, those seem to be pretty snug. So next there's this little piece. And give it a punch. Not very gentle, but now it's in place. Next, we're going to put these in. I don't know what they're called. I'm going to call them, uh, oh my gosh, this person doesn't know how to drive handles. As in, hang on for dear life. There. Now one thing I can see, I uh, made a bit of a error here in my upholstery work. I was too ambitious when I cut these holes, so I made them just a little too big. So you see a little hole here in the material, but uh, I think I can fix that somehow with maybe a daub of something. Do you guys have any suggestions? Leave them in the comments below if you do, okay? So now we're going to put these little plastic clips on that go on the, oh my gosh, you can't drive handles, and uh, hopefully they'll go on okay. Now, to put these plastic side panel things on, uh, you have to take the seat belts off first. So for that, I'm just using a metric uh, socket. This is a 14 millimeter. Be forewarned, these things really are on tough. And there we go. Sounded like something broke, but nope, it just decided to give. There, and it's off. And the big old honk and bolt thing just stays right in it. Use a flat screwdriver to hopefully pry it in place on the other side here. Always helps to whack your head. Something's not quite working. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> you see this tab here? That tab has to go in this hole first. Now I can line this little guy up with the hole. There. Now it should pop in place like nobody's business. Nice. There we go. There. Good and snug. <laughs> and this is interesting. There's a little gap here in the plastic that allows the seatbelt to, to work okay.
as you can see. Now all I got to do is gently put in this uh, running board uh, plastic. There. Well, I thought I was all done, but uh, guess not. When I drove the car, I noticed a bit of an issue. You can't use the seat belts, and that's because I put the plastic shields on in the wrong way. So I thought they went behind here nice and neatly, but when you get in the vehicle, all of a sudden the seat belt is wrapping around your chest, not around your waist. And I'm not sure why I didn't notice that. I just didn't, but I can fix it. Use our famous tool here. Now we'll do the other one, and that should fix the mistake I made. Okay, seatbelts on for safety. There we go. Fits exactly where it's supposed to. Mistake corrected. And ready to roll. So other than the wrinkles I made while gluing the fabric on, I was very pleased with the end result. Far from perfect, but dramatically better than the way it was before. Okay, that job is finally done. And, uh, wow, <laughs> it was definitely a challenge. But uh, I got through it, and I'm really happy with the results. So let's look at the overall cost of things. The 3M professional type spray was pretty expensive. Um, ended up being about $50 for those two cans once I got them delivered here. The fabric itself was uh, around $60. So, so I paid around $110 for all of the material I needed. But I still saved a couple hundred dollars uh, by doing it myself. And it was a really fun project. Now, a few things to note. Uh, you won't see me taking the car apart to uh, access the headliner uh, and the headboard there, just because um, it was so nerve-wracking. I didn't even bother filming it, but got it all done. And so if you just reversed what I did, you'd uh, be able to know how it all comes apart. Or I'll put a link to a couple videos that I watched. And if uh, you want to see lots more videos, then please subscribe. Hit the notification bell thing. That'll let you know when my next video is coming up. And I really appreciate you folks being here. Please leave some comments, and I'll see you on the next video.